What is going on? It is Alex coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to be breaking down a brand new mock draft from Sports Illustrated. If you are new, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Do all that fun YouTube jazz. We're on the way to 10K. We just broke nine, which is incredible. So I have you to thank for that. Let's get right into this. Below my face of my board, it is being continually updated. And yes, very much continually updated. And of course, Below that, it's going to be other ways to get involved in the community as well as take advantage of our two sponsors in Olipop as well as uh, Underdog Fantasy. So feel free to use those codes, take advantage of it, be able to save yourself some money or be able to have some fun. Uh, when the season's over, we're going to start doing a lot more sports betting. So feel free to get a head start on that using the code Hail Mary. Starting off with the first overall pick, uh, we got the Chicago Bears. I think the draft order has changed slightly based on today, but it's not going to really be anything crazy. The Bears select Caleb Williams. You know, based on how Justin Fields plays today, today uh, again, this was, I believe, posted earlier today. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt. You know, before today, it would make sense. Um, after today, I do actually have a lot of faith in Justin Fields. Technically, if y'all end up getting really hot and winning out, you still could make the playoffs because the NFC is pretty wide open. Uh, the Lions just don't really look fully ready to take full advantage of the opportunities that they have. They're now nine and four. I believe that you guys are now five and eight. So you actually have a legitimate chance. There is a potential chance to flip the division if all hell breaks loose over there. But I do believe you guys could potentially get a wild card spot. If the defense continues playing the way it is, then I could totally believe you uh, that you guys could end up going towards an actual push. But that is very wishful thinking. But I do think Justin Fields is starting to prove that like either you take Marvin Harrison here or you trade down. And reevaluating the quarterbacks in this class, uh, actually I've regraded all of the top six in my opinion. And uh, you know I'll get the seventh in there soon with J.J. McCarthy. Uh, well, it's, it's not a class that I necessarily think is over the moon. And I think it's getting a little bit overrated, but um, the Bears still, I don't know if you're going to be getting that much of an upgrade, but Caleb Williams, I think, is the most bust proof if he goes to the Bears because they're good at using mobility of quarterbacks and then also that big playmaking ability. If this ends up being this way, I hope that Justin Fields goes for a good amount to another team because I think he's actually deserved uh, that type of compensation if he's traded. New England Patriots then going at Drake May here at two. Uh, Drake May is now officially my quarterback four is he my quarterback four now he is so um i do have bo nix 0.25 points ahead of him just rewatched him today i've watched bo nix's worst game i watched drake may's not worst game i want to make sure that i looked at very recent tape for both of them uh drake may just super inconsistent he has yet to solve that issue he is extremely inconsistent it bothers the hell out of me because the nfl defenses feast on inconsistency that consistent quarterbacks like Tom Brady, I mean, hell, we talked about Jalen Hurts, like the quarterbacks, even Patrick Mahomes, he's very consistent because that offense honestly is really drawn up to make the most out of them. Those quarterbacks that are making the most success are the most consistent. And unfortunately, those that have those momentary slip ups, even the, the amazing quarterbacks like Justin Herbert, when he has some inconsistencies, of course, wide receivers don't help with that. And I'm talking about the best of the best. I love Justin Herbert. He hasn't had enough success due to multiple factors. It's not just him. It's not just him. He, it's a poor example because I love Justin Herbert, and that's kind of Drake May's ceiling is Justin Herbert. But, you know, it's going to be an upgrade on the Patriots. I just, I don't see the consistency. But we'll talk about that when I make my quarterbacks video. You know, I did have some quarterbacks drop significantly in my rankings. Some of them ascended a lot. Of course, the board below my face is going to describe that a lot better. Cardinals go Marvin Harrison Jr. at pick three. If that's the player that's there, that's the best player you can take. I do like the idea of the Cardinals going right tackle sometime in this class. We'll see because it's a live reaction if that will be the case. The commanders do the right thing and select Olu Fashanu here at four. They need offensive line help. Olu Fashanu can also wait a year if need be. There's just the athleticism works well with Sam Howell as well. I think it would be a perfect move for the commanders. The Bears then selected Joe Alt. I did not know he was a junior. I don't think he's a junior. I didn't know Joe Alt was a junior, but uh, Bears select Joe Alt here. Braxton Jones did a very fine job. For me, if you're at this point, of course, you trade out. I don't believe this mock has trades. It's a live reaction. And, you know, personally, 
A Joe Alt's probably the most safe decision that you can make. And I don't think that anybody would be complaining about the line getting better. So I'm not going to really get into it because I do think it's a solid enough selection for sure. I do think edge rusher, given the fact that the tier two and three edge rushers are really falling off in terms of quality because a lot of them are going back to school. I wouldn't be against continuing to bolster the defense because that really is helping Justin be able to, you know, be a lot more calm, not have to be as much of a game manager, just allowing him to be able to flourish. You don't want him having to win the game for you, even though you should. He, he has the ability to win games for you. He just shouldn't have to. So I would love to see more consistency on that uh, down the line. But as of now, it doesn't seem like they need it. The Jets then go JC Latham, perfectly fine. Right tackle is a great position to upgrade. And this is the best pick that could possibly be there, given the guys who are on the board. Giants select Layatu Latu. You know, given that you have two second round edge rusher edge picks, I think, or two second round picks, edge rusher is probably a position I would push down, even though I just said that tier two and three has gotten significantly worse. You still have some good guys who have yet to return to college who could be in that range. So personally, I don't feel like this is as pressing of an issue. When you got Jaden Daniels here, uh, who's my QB two now, that would be probably where I would opt to go. Pick number eight for the Titans going Malik Neighbors. I do like the idea of getting extra deep threat ability for um, for Will Levis in the future. When you have an offensive tackle on the board, though, this offensive line has been no bueno. And I am going to just continue talking about this Penny Sewell versus Jamar Chase idea. Same thing with Malik Neighbors and Talise Fuwaka. Get the upgraded offensive tackle, not the receiver. Pick number nine, the Saints go Brock Bowers. I mean, honestly, the Titans could have could have went Brock Bowers. It's probably the only other move I would really respect besides Talise Fuwaga. The Saints would not. I would not think about this twice. A quarterback, yeah. Quarterback is the only other position I would debate going after. But there's a certain point where, you know, building the best roster is much better than just taking the best position that you need. Like, again, value over need. BPA. Get need in the offseason in terms of free agency. Get value here in the draft because these guys will be you know, big playmakers down the line. Buccaneers going my QB2 and Jaden Daniels. Pretty happy about that one. You know, I do think I was talking a lot about Michael Penix being the guy here at 10. Not for me. He's actually ended up dropping off my radar quite significantly. And, you know, I didn't watch his worst game either. I watched Bo Nix's worst game, but not uh, not Michael Penix. I watched him back to back. So for me, um, Jaden Daniels is the best selection here for the Buccaneers besides Bo Nix. Then the R- Vegas Raiders go Bo Nix. Honestly, personally, I'd flip these just for the narrative, but this does follow my QB ranking, so I can't complain too much. Uh, Bo Nix, apart from when, actually surprisingly, when he's in system, uh, he plays a lot worse, basically, like on those starting drives. I don't feel like he actually is thinking as much. He's more operating off of muscle memory, and that's why we see a lot of the processing mistakes, him forcing balls. When the game progresses, Bo Nix actually performs significantly better than I ever expected. Again, I purposely watch his, I watch his worst games because of the fact that I'm like, hey, you know, I want to see the flaws in an older quarterback, not really the exact up, uh, upside of him. Bo Nix, for the most part, is actually throwing his receivers open. A lot of times when you watch it on game tape, it might look like he threw a ball behind a player. But when you watch it in all 22, that's where he needs to put the ball for it not to get picked. Uh, Made some weird slip ups there in that final championship game, but ultimately he is eight points, four points in each game away from being undefeated and having a much, much different narrative. Uh, Vegas Raiders would be blessed to have Bo Nix. You got the Chargers going Quilly McKinstry. Corner two is going to be wide open. Not going to blame him too much. I would prefer to go after Talise, but that's just because that's what I love. Uh, Talise is a very special player to me. Quilly McKinstry would be an excellent addition to the Chargers. Bills go Romo Dunze. I have him as like a second round, late first quality player. I do like Rome. He's a good player. Again, if you're having a day two grade, you are a very good player. You deserve starting reps in the NFL. Just got to put that out there. I do not think he's a second coming, but I actually think he's better than Michael Penix. So we'll put it that way. Uh, Romo Dunze would be a good addition on the Bills. I certainly think that they could use somebody with that frame, with that speed. And just overall, I think he would actually flourish uh, with Josh Allen as his QB. Pick number 14 for the Broncos. They go Jerzon Johnny Newton out of Illinois. You know, I don't feel like you could have something that is a negative from this pick. You know, deep down, maybe you want a corner two. I think wide receiver is the best move you can make. 
you know, edge rusher, they feel very comfortable with the edge rushers they have. Nick Benito actually just went down when I was watching the game. So RIP to that. But Jerzon Johnny Newton would be an excellent addition to the Broncos. You know, you can kick him inside, put him outside. I love that versatility. And honestly, he's just a very high quality lineman to have. And that is always in demand in the NFL. Pick number 15 for the Seattle Seahawks to go Michael Penix Jr. Uh, Based on the fact that all the quarterbacks have been taken, he is the next in line for me. Well, actually, he's not. I actually rewatched Joe Milton and made sure to watch his game versus Missouri where he got absolutely shellacked. Yes, I purposefully watch awful games of quarterbacks, even the ones I like, because you deserve honesty, not my biased opinion. I think Joe Milton's a better quarterback than Michael Penix, but Michael Penix has better progression. He's going to be better day one. I just believe that Joe Milton's going to be better down the line. Again, I'll make a quarterbacks video on that in the coming weeks slash month or so. But the Seahawks could always use an upgrade at quarterback. Michael Penix could certainly be that. He's just not mobile enough for me. And his he's a little bit too inconsistent. And I don't feel like he trusts himself. There's a lot of times where I could see him look at a, um, at a ball that he could throw deep over the middle. He doesn't take it. Like a lot of these deep routes that are going over the middle, like a like just a deep in, like you're just, I don't see him throwing that. And I can see that his eyes go there. I just don't know if he trusts himself. There's a lot of double clutching. For me, there's just some issues that I have with Penix that could certainly be resolved by having DK Metcalf as your wide receiver one, but I still have those concerns. Rams going Jared Verse, amazing player. Again, I don't know why there's, I mean, he dipped off a little bit with production here and there, but this dude's just been absolutely dynamite over his whole career there at Florida State. Big fan of that, former Albany rusher. Pick number 17, the Bengals go key on Coleman. I'm glad that the hype on Keon Coleman has died off quite a bit because, again, I was getting shellacked early on for not having him high enough, even though when he was at Michigan State, I had him as my number 33 or 34 player in the draft. Like, hello? Um, You know, Keon Coleman's someone who I fell in love with because he's an ex-wide receiver. He has not progressed the way I wanted him to. He's a great player, cannot generate separation for his life with his route running because he's just not a route runner. That was one of my big issues with him. He's not going to be someone who can generate legit separation. He's a four or five wide receiver who has shown some great ability after the catch, unbelievable hands. And to that point, he's always open because of the fact that he is just so dominant at the catch point. Great frame. I think the Bengals would be blessed to have him to replace T Higgins. I think he'd be a great player. But when people were talking about him being the best receiver in the class, it was like, all right, like, I love this guy. Let's just pipe down a little bit. And the hype is now at the proper point. Like he is deserving of a mid first round pick. I dropped him to 17 on my board from 16. whoop de doo Or it might've been 15. Doesn't even matter. Uh, Next, we got the Steelers going JJ McCarthy. I'd rip my hair out. I would. JJ, like, I think quarterback is a good position for the Steelers. I think Joe Milton is a Pittsburgh Steeler. I think he's a third round pick to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He needs a year to develop. He has a crazy cannon arm. Again, I'll I'll go into that in my quarterbacks video. We don't need to spend time on talking about why I would go Joe Milton here. I'm not just, we'll wait for my re-evaluation to be fair, but JJ has an it factor. He's a fun player to watch, but the dude's too damn inconsistent. He's carried by an amazing run game. Um, You know, to be fair, that run game has been very inconsistent this year as well. And he stepped up when that run game was not performing very well. But in the biggest games, I did not see J.J. McCarthy be his best self. And you have to be your best self in those games. I would not like it as the Steelers because I just don't think J.J. McCarthy fits the mold of quarterback that I would want to command my franchise. I'll leave it there. Pick number 19, the Falcons go Dallas Turner. Doesn't fit their edge profile that they're going to be looking for. You got to look at that schematic. The edge rushers that they will be targeting are going to be about 260 plus, similar to the Eagles. Dallas Turner is an amazing player, my number four player in the class. So I think the value is there. It just depends. Do you want to switch up your scheme at all? Green Bay Packers go to Lise Fawaga, right tackle to Oregon State. This would be the best case scenario. Him or Amarius Mims, or you know, if Amarius Mims comes out, or you can talk about JC Latham here as well. I mean, tackle is the best thing that could happen to the Packers. And you know what? It happens here. Great pick. Minnesota Vikings then go Braylon Trice. They're losing two edge rushers. Honestly, if you flip Braylon Trice and Dallas Turner, this would make a little bit more sense. But you know what? If the board falls like this, it's an amazing selection. My number five player in the class going to Minnesota. 
Arizona Cardinals then go Kalen King. I think cornerback's a great position to target for the Cardinals. You'd be blessed to have a generational and a blue chip player coming out with these two selections. At pick number 23, the Indianapolis Colts go Emeka Abuka. So the Colts could use a true wide receiver one. I don't know if Emeka Abuka, like because Pittman is essentially an amazing number two wide receiver, similar to Juju Smith-Schuster, who performs with number one numbers. Like he doesn't have, in my opinion, the necessary, I mean, I, I love Michael Pittman. He is a one, but he, there's something about him that will never say he's a top 10 receiver in the NFL. I don't know if Emeka could get there, but I have more faith than in Michael. And again, I'm biased. Michael went to my high school. Like he was there in my seven on seven games where, you know, he was coaching us up when he first transferred to you or when he first went to USC, like he was there. So I'm very biased towards Michael Pittman Jr. I love the guy. Great player. He made my high school experience incredible because I got to watch him absolutely shred defenses. That being said, Emeka Abuka could be someone who is even more elevated, and then it can make Michael Pittman even more dangerous. I wouldn't be against this. Getting more firepower for Anthony Richardson is never a bad idea. I think the Colts could be fine doing this. I think Cooper DeGene's the better choice because of the versatility, but at the end of the day, there's not that many wide receivers that I think would compete with Emeka Abuka in terms of being an all-around effective weapon. Pick number 24 for the Texans, they go Cam Kinchins. I don't think a safety pick is this key. I think Tavondre Sweat's the best option for the team. I stopped taking him because I got a couple of complaints with how often I took Tavondre Sweat to the Texans. But, you know, defensive interiors where I would target first or edge rusher. You got Chop Robinson there. Have Will Anderson train Chop the way he trained Dallas Turner. Just saying would be great in my eyes. Uh, corner number two for the future definitely could be on the board because having elite corners, it's never a bad idea. But Cam Kinchins, great player. I just don't know if the need is this much to where you need to push to take Cam Kinchins when there are other players of quality who are there. Uh, continuing on, we got the Chiefs going Troy Franklin. I think this fits perfectly with what they're trying to build. It's a big wide receiver in terms of height, a little bit on the thinner side, but that still fits the Chiefs MO and who can run really fast. Essentially, he's going to be an elite version of MVS. I really like Troy Franklin. One issue I have with him is that he's had more drops this year, in uh, especially in terms of contested catches, and you know, just one of those catch and traffics over the middle. He just sometimes doesn't have the, uh, let's just say, the enforceability to just yank off a defender and actually make a very strong catch in traffic. But he does have those reps here and there. Just I have seen a couple of those drops that I would wish he would actually catch those. My only real grievance with Troy Franklin because I think he's an amazing receiver. Jaguars go Xavier Leggett. I make this pick myself. I'm a big fan of Xavier. He is in my top 40 at number 40. So big fan of Xavier Leggett. I think the Jacksonville Jaguars would be blessed to have a receiver of that size, speed, and just overall ability. I think Dougie P would use him on a lot of screens, not screens, um, jet sweeps and stuff. That'd be dangerous. Dangerous to see a guy that size being used essentially the way that they probably should have used LaVisca Chenault. Pick number 27 for the Cowboys, they go Nate Wiggins. The value is incredible, so that's the only reason why I'm not against this pick, because Nate Wiggins is a very smart corner. You're investing in the future. Deron Bland, he's consistently a big playmaker, but similar to what happens when you pretty much like allow 1,000 yards. Like I'm pretty sure Trevon Diggs allowed something like 800 yards or something one season, right? You know, the big plays come with big risks. Uh, Nate Wiggins is a smart corner. I don't think he makes as big of plays, but I think he reduces the bigger risk. It might be a very good one, two, three punch there with Deron Bland and um, why am I Trevon Diggs down the line? So I personally would be going after maybe a left tackle here or Kingsley Suamatea to have him sit for a year, just be able to develop somebody. But Nate Wiggins is not a bad option. It's not a bad option because it's just the value is there. Uh, Chop Robinson for the Lions. It's a huge, huge, huge value pick for y'all. I think that's a great move. I would not be looking at QB here. Joe Milton, that'd be so funny to bring him in and have him compete with Hedden Hooker again and almost had of him as a two QB system for the deep shots, but definitely not the actual smart decision by any stretch. More of a Madden move there than anything. Chop Robinson's the best pick that you could probably make at this point. Niners then go Amarius Mims. You shouldn't be on the board, but 
If he is, then the Niners could not pass on him. That is the best possible move in the history of mankind. So uh, good pick for the Niners there. Ravens go Cooper to Gene, uh, cornerback slash defensive back out of Iowa. You know, I don't think Baltimore Ravens need to go a potential star safety here because your safety core is extremely good. I would be preferring after another corner. If you're going to be going after the defensive back route, Cooper DeGene, I don't trust him to be a true boundary corner. And, you know, he's a really, really special talent on special teams, no pun intended. But, you know, for me, eh, not not really there. Kingsley Zuamate actually would be a really solid pick. Since he's a swing tackle, you can certainly fill him in when injuries pop up. He's going to be a good long-term development play. Uh, Miami Dolphins go Graham Barton. Uh, guard slash center out of Duke slash tackle in case, you know, Taron Armstead decides to retire at some point. I think that's a very solid option. You know, you could certainly upgrade some other positions. Defensive interior is not a position I would shy away from. You could go after another safety at this point because I think Tyler Newbin would be a really good upgrade. And, you know, seeing him paired up there with Javon Holland would be really nice. But Dolphins wouldn't, I, I'm never going to shame a team for going after a quality lineman. Then we got the Eagles ending off the draft. Speaking of Tyler Newbin, uh, you know, he goes here to the Eagles. I don't think that you need to press the safety issue as much. I think give a little bit more time because you got Byard there. He still can be there for an extra year. And you have Sidney Brown, who should be the eventual safety two on this squad, who could be elite. You, we've already seen the potential. I had Sidney as a second round quality player. He was really fun to watch. He needs development time. Kevin Byard is going to continue to develop him. Have some patience. Of course, right now, we don't exactly get to see that progression fully yet because he's had some struggles here and there, but we'll see what happens. Ed Reed Blankenship will, you know, most likely be on this team. Realistic pick here, Kingsley Suamate at a heartbeat. Future right tackle definitely will be a really good player to develop. So that is going to be the video. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the show as always. See you on the far side. Peace.